The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rose. Now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648 or internationally at 727 873 7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Uh, welcome to the November 5th. It is the uh, Taco Tuesday, the terrific Tuesday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We're going to go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know I am absolutely grateful for your presence here. But much, much more important than that, during this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in at 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, we've got you covered. Go ahead, send me an email. Do it early. Steve at TFNN.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, in our Tiger's Den, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Tuesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Les Show. Right now, we got a mixed market out here. You've got the Dow trading up 57 points and the S&P down one point, flat out there. The NDX 100 is up 13. Russell's up two. Semis are up 12. New York Stock Exchange and Wilshire 5000 are trading uh, slightly lower. Spot Volatility Index is trading up 20 cents, trading out at 1303. Goldilocks off 27 buckaroonies right now, uh, potentially getting ready to take out that really important uh, low of 1489.20. It's not a low, but that would be the bottom of its daily profile, bullish structured profile. That is, we'll take a look at gold, but closing below that, it's Sayonara, baby. If we take a look at this, silver, it's down 46 cents, or about 2.5% uh, out there. Uh, bonds are off uh, more than one uh, about 1.5 points as we speak, trading out at 157. 31. Leading the charge dollar wise, the upside. We've got some leaders. Next Cure is up uh, 41 bucks, 155%. Fair Isaac Corp is up 33 bucks or 11%. Regenerin Pharmaceuticals up 8. Booking Holdings up 1% or 18 bucks. Adobe up 10 or 3%. Everbridge Inc. up 15%, 10 bucks. Equinix is the big loser dollar wise, the downside off 17 bucks. Then followed by Market Taxes Holdings off 16. Shake Shack down 16. Myriad Genetics off 14. So Certainly things to look at, but we're going to try to look at everything that you want to look at. And the first request, really, a follow-up to, uh, as we were going into yesterday's last two minutes out there, tried to answer three questions, and I didn't really do give one justice. And the one justice would have been uh, D. R. Horton. Ticker symbol here is D-H-I. And the question is, this individual is long from the 30s and wants to know the probability of the stock breaking above its all-time high um, made in the 54 level. So here's what you know about DHI, uh, ticker symbol, DR Horton. And that was yesterday's close is not what you wanted to see. That was a close below the daily profile. If I expand out the daily time frame chart out here, what you're going to see is coming off of the bottom in 2018, December of 2018, we really didn't see close. Well, we saw a period of time where, the, when I say a period of time, April 25th through about uh, uh, May 14th, we saw some price breaks or closes below the bottom of a daily profile. We then saw that for a couple of days here in early June, but for the most part, that's a key support level. So prices below that area, again, 51.86. And what this suggests, Alan, is you should be asking the question, not with regard to whether it's going to take out those highs, but how low is this thing going to go? So from a profile perspective, You've got a brand new profile from a weekly standpoint formed three weeks ago, the top of which is 5353. 
So, Alan, price is back inside that range. We would say that the downside target right now from a profile standpoint, 48.37 to 49.52. And if price closes below 48.37, the bottom of that bullish structured weekly profile, then you're looking at 42.55. So you're exactly right. In essence, this made a measured move, 100% move of a move by getting back to its January 2018 levels out here. And so I think you need to be careful. If we take a look at the monthly time frame chart out here, the monthly time frame chart, now the month of November doesn't end, obviously, for a while. But what we do have is a confirmed TD setup nine count pattern. That, for, that confirmed last uh, month, in the month of October. So that's a topping signal. Now, this would say sellers should be able to push price to 48.68. If price on a monthly basis closed below 48.68, 37.16 is the nut. Price was also moving higher doing less relative energy. That creates that Rhodes momentum, one of the, one of the aspects of the Rhodes momentum indicator top. Right now, where the... Fifth day in November, you've got a, a Three River Evening Star. This will be more important as we get to the end of November. But the monthly chart is saying extreme caution. So watch those weekly levels that we took a look at, those weekly market profiles out there. If I take a look at a daily time frame chart here, you can also see the price moving higher, doing less relative energy, generated the bearish reversal candle for that uh, pattern. And I think what I said as we were going off the air yesterday is don't let price close below that October, October 30th low out there. That low because that is a hammer candle the low by the way is 50 15 if you see a close below that what you likely have is an a to b equal cd to the downside that a to b equal cd to the downside would give you a whoops that didn't work out real well let's try that again Let's see, there we go. That A to B equals CD pattern would give you a price projection, uh, one to one price projection in the 49.32 area. 48.16 is your 1.272 expansion of 161.8% gets you down into the 46.68. So overall, with regard to ticker symbol DHR or DR Horton, I know you wanted me to answer the question, will it make it and take out those highs again? I would be more cautious and worried that this thing is headed lower or at least headed down to that 48.37, 49.32 area out there. Alan, I hope that that assists you and helps you out with that trade. Um, we've also got another question here from uh, asking if they can go long silver. This is Bob Y wanting to go long silver. He wants to go long high ho silver today. So let's go take a look at the metals out here, but let's begin with, I'll, I'll move into silver, but first let's take a look at gold. I had mentioned this during the, uh, 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 the opening of the uh, show, and what we're taking a look at here, the December gold contract, and on this chart, you're taking a look at both its daily and weekly market profiles, very much like we just took a look at for DR Horton out here. Now, when we take Take a look at this. The key level of support is the bottom of that box. It's already been tagged today. The low is 1482.10. The bottom of the daily box is 1482.40. A close below that because this is a bullish structured box, meaning the center line is closer to the bottom of the box than the top. So there's more seller or buyers lined up or should be between 1495 and 1482. So price has held this level out here. That is uh you know, I could understand wanting to consider taking a long trade in gold. Uh, I would say consider it, but maybe not. Folks, I hate to be the bear or bearer of bad news, but Goldilocks is going much, much lower. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. 
Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Task Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. So let's uh, try to answer Bob's question about silver now. So we're taking a look at gold. We know that gold is sitting at a key level of support. If you see a close below that level, it's curtains to the downside. Uh, I can't believe, Bob, that uh, silver will start trading higher if gold is going to trade lower. So that should be something to think about and a reason why we took a look at Goldilocks first. Now, if we take a look at silver, it's not sitting down at a key level of support, such as the bottom of its daily or bottom of its weekly profile. That would be in the area where we'd be more inclined to say, okay, go ahead and consider taking that long trade on silver out here. Uh, those levels, by the way, would be 1712 and 1717, the daily and the weekly bottom of its box. Now, price is sitting at its center line for the weekly time frame at 1753. But if we were going to take a long position, what Stevie would like to see is some type of bottoming signal for you. If we look at silver for three different time frames out here, these three different time frames are showing us support and resistance lines. These are the 30, the 60, and the 120 minute time frame charts. These have the TD set up nine counts out there. And they also have the uh, support, the breakout support areas. Now, when we take a look at silver on a 30 and a 60, 60 minute base, you've got price breaking through those levels of support of $18 and $17.89 out there. If you jump down to the 60 minute chart, there was $18 and $17.92 out here. Uh, there was one even further back a little bit. Those are the red lines, by the way, on my screen. That was $17.81. You don't see a TD setup nine count bottom pattern out here. Uh, if I look at the 120 minute time frame chart, then yes, price has made it back to an area of support that must hold. That's in the $17.51. 1764 area, but I don't have any kind of bottoming signal on the shorter term time frame charts out there. So very hesitant to suggest that you go ahead and take a, a long trade. The only reason is because I don't see the pattern out here that would suggest that you get into that trade. So here's my suggestion, and that is uh, pay attention to Goldilocks. By the way, I'll pull over the chart, same chart for gold out here. So the same chart, when I say the same chart, I mean the same time frames, right? 30, 60, and 120 minutes time frames. There is a TD setup nine count pattern that is in effect right now for the 60 minute chart. 
not on the 30 minute time frame chart and price did come back on the 120 minute chart you can see it's testing this 1483 level of support but that breaks and if the bottom of the uh, uh, daily profile gives way out here this uh, 60 minute nine count will do nothing more than just generate a little bit of a uh, bounce out here um, I'm just not seeing it I'm just not seeing it to suggest that you should go take a long trade in high host silver but you've got the numbers you've got what I'm looking at put that together with what you are looking at as well and uh, then uh, go ahead and fire away the daily time frame chart for silver today is not going to be a TD setup nine count pattern uh, because I can see already where price is trading in relationship to bar number five and it's below that closing price out there um, you know but it did form one of those nice major tops with a TD setup nine count all the way back at its highs uh, back in September so I would just be very cautious here in the uh, metals very likely the metals will continue to move lower uh, through the rest of the year um, down into maybe the uh, end of January ish type time frame as a time frame to be uh, looking for out there. I would say just be very, very, very cautious and very patient. And you know, the weekly chart for gold, folks, here you've got a nice Rhodes momentum indicator top that formed out here, price movement higher to a less relative energy out there. And uh, intermediate term, I would not be surprised for us to see Goldilocks pull back to 1,286 bucks on the way down. But look, one thing at a time, we won't use that as the prognostication because there's other levels that we'll be watching. I just want you to be careful out there because there are topping patterns that are present that are worth noting and worth paying attention to. And uh, that's what I think you should do. So no other questions that I see at the uh, moment out here. So let's go take a spin around the uh, market, see what we're doing. You know, we looked at the um, we looked at those short term time frames. Let's do the same thing here in looking at the ES mini and looking at the ES mini here in the 30 minute, the 60 minute, the 120 minute chart. Unlike when we looked at gold and silver, which were breaking through levels of support, uh, we haven't seen that take place in the ES mini. So what does that mean to you and I? It means that we do not have a change in trend. The first change in trend signal for me would be breaking a key level of support. Now inside the ES mini on a 30 minute time frame, it's 3068, then 3066 and 3055. It's 3068 on the 60 minute time frame chart. You can see how price moved back to that level and is held. And on a two hour time frame, it's 3037. Until we see these levels break, price is really doing nothing more than just pulling back and testing a level of support. And why are these levels of support really important for you and I to be paying attention to? And the reason is, is because of, well, a couple of different reasons. Take a look at the um, horizontal trading ranges out here, as well as that little diagonal rising trend line. And that's the one coming off of the highs out here from uh, and this is so this is a January's highs as well as January of 2018 as well as the September of 2018 levels. And this is kind of an unusual uh, version of a consolidation, so to speak. But nonetheless, price right now is capping off at about that trend line, give or take a few points out here. So it's a reason to be cautious, a reason to be cautious. Other reasons to be cautious, if we take a look at the daily time frame chart for the ES mini here, what we're going to see is we're going to see that today is going to be bar number nine of a TD setup nine count. Now, we know that those highs can occur on bars eight, nine or the bar following nine. We also know that today was an intraday higher high than yesterday. Uh, that uh, continues wave number seven. That's letter G on my screen out here. We know that both of those are topping signals. We don't have any confirmation yet, but they're topping signals that you and I should pay attention to. We can also see two A to B equals CD patterns that are in place, the larger one that could take price up to 3105. The smaller one could take price up to 3090. That'd be your one to two A to B equals CD. Here's the deal until for those A to B equals CD patterns, until we see some type of bearish reversal candle, those patterns would just simply suggest that price wants to continue to move higher. And we can see what those price projections are for those A to B equals CD patterns. Today's a little bit of a doji, but it doesn't matter what the candle formation is at 125 in the afternoon. It's what is the candle formation at today's close. But we've got topping signals going lower running into resistance trend line resistance out there and it just simply says it's time to be cautious in other words you and I 
we would not be surprised to see the market top, whether it's today or over the course of the next couple of days. We would not be surprised to see that. We won't get caught up into the euphoria, so to speak. If we take a look at the NQ, you've basically got the same thing. You can see that little yellow diagonal rising trend line out here. You can also see its horizontal trading range boundary line at 82.37. We're trading at 82.29. If we take a look at the daily time frame chart here for the NQ, you'll see the same things. You'll see the larger 1 to 1 A to B equals CD, which is 82.31. That level's been hit. We're trading at 82.30. Today looks like it will also be a bar number 9 of a TD setup 9 count. It, too, is in wave number seven. So you've got all these similar patterns out here. These are the types of patterns that you and I use to help us understand what the markets are communicating to us. And right now, the markets are simply communicating caution, which you would expect as you get up to resistance. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Uh, S&P is basically flat out there. We were taking a look at the equity market, so we began taking a look at uh, them. Uh, let's uh, let's go take a look at what's going on with regard to our TAS daily profiles. We'll do that for Jay. Uh, Jay, no new TAS daily profiles. I know you didn't ask the question, but but I know what you're thinking. 
and that's a beautiful thing. So no daily profiles, new profiles, daily or weekly, uh, that are even attempting to form, because I do have Stevie's uh, Super Doppler program on here. So nothing for the ES, nothing for the NQ, nothing for the Dow, and nothing for the Russell 2000 out here. So what we know is that uh, price inside of the uh, four equity futures contract still trading above resistance goes with, uh, you know, really what we're taking. So we've got these topping patterns, but it's just really key that if there's going to be a change in trend, a change in trend will start to begin. Uh, you'll start to begin seeing key levels of support fail. It kind of makes sense, doesn't it? If we just simply step back for a moment and say, okay, let's put together these objective tools, help us understand where price is breaking out on different time frames. If we're going to see some type of change in trend, we're certainly going to see it first on the shorter term time frame. So that's why we looked at those 30 and 60 and 120 minutes. Now, hey, look, if price closes below that, it doesn't guarantee that uh, we're going to see that change in trend. That's when we've got to go back to the daily time frame chart, take a look at the patterns that are uh, present, uh, take Take a look where support is and uh, and then just simply monitor the trade uh, that way. Uh, but as we speak right now, uh, and it doesn't matter what we go take a look at uh, in the equity futures contract, if we take a look at the Russell 2000 as an example, there's no levels of support that have been broken here. The key level that price would need to close below in the Russell 2000 equity futures contract would be 1592.20. That would be the first level. If price were to break below that, then you'd be looking at 1563 out here. So what is arguably the weakest indice hasn't cracked just yet, but that hasn't cracked just yet as as of 132 in the afternoon. So the Dow, if we take a look at the Dow, just to finish those time frame charts out, those 30, 60, and 120 minutes. I don't want anybody uh, writing complaints out here. You can see the Dow equity futures contract also has not broken a key level of support. Uh, the level to be watching inside the Dow would be the 27306 uh, area, then 27290, and even 27207. But uh, not there. Those would be the levels that I'd be watching today, overnight. Uh, if there's going to be a change in trend, you're going to see those areas fail. Now, with regard to a horizontal trading range, we did look at the ES, we did look at the NQ. If we take a look at the Dow, you'll see, in essence, the same kind of thing. You'll see price testing the rising trend line resistance. And if price can close above that, or all the indices or equity futures contracts do the same, the Dow equity futures contract would target 27,825 next and then likely 28,644. But remember, well, I don't. I can't say remember. How can you remember? We didn't even take a look at the chart, the daily chart here for the Dow equity futures contract. It's also in wave number seven, letter G. It's also going to be a TD setup nine count pattern out here. But it's A to B equals CD pattern as a price projection 28.003. That's the biggie out there. So we just want to pay attention to these patterns, see how price trades, and then we just simply will act accordingly. But this way, you've got the shorter term, you've got the daily signals. And uh, lastly, let's go take a look at check in on the New York Stock Exchange, take a look at the broader market, so to speak. Here is the signal, the most consistent signal so far that's been present that says caution Will Robinson. And that is, we take a look at panel number two. That's the advanced decline oscillator reading. What you're going to see there, if you look to the very right, you're going to see a diagonal green line going from high to low. Versus if you look at price in the New York Stock Exchange, closing price, because we're using a line chart, you're going to see price moving from lower to higher out there. And it's those divergences that have meant something in the past. Now, they typically mean a whole lot more when the spot volatility index is above its 50-day exponential moving average. Nowhere near that. The current price for the spot volatility index is 12.98. The 50-day exponential moving average is 15.11. So it's got a long way to go before it will get up there. The advanced decline line is still above zero inside the New York Stock Exchange. So yes, topping signals but uh, nothing that's really been confirmed. Confirmation would come from a close below the zero line, the zero threshold level of that advanced decline oscillator out here. We don't have that in play uh, as we speak right now. So that's what the general markets are doing with regard to the spot volatility index. If we take a look at its symbols out here, 1298, nothing wrong here, still below all of the uh, futures contracts. That's actually the bullish configuration out here. So I don't have anything in the spot volatility index with the tools that I use 
uh, that are suggesting that we've got a uh, top in place uh, uh, right now. But we won't really rely upon the VIX for that. Although there are signals that I use, as you know, you use them as well to help us identify divergences. They just simply are not in place as we speak uh, right this very moment. So what else do we want to go look at? You know what? Let's go look at this. We had some calls yesterday. Uh, one of those calls was on light sweet crude. Uh, let's do that. Let's see if we can pull up light sweet crude. Let's do this here. Let's go ahead and pull up Stevie's uh, synthetic contract. And this way we can take a look at profile levels for the daily, the weekly, the monthly, and the uh, quarterly levels out here. So let's let those populate. And right now what we're taking a look at, let me just get these chart here, the formation of this chart, so you can see what's going on from a profile perspective. And right now, price is trading above the top of its daily profile. It really was doing the same thing yesterday during the show, and then I think began to sell off around 3 o'clock or so, 2 or 3, 2.30, 3 o'clock. But the level to be watching today is 56.92. That's for those individuals that, or individual I was calling that wanted to short lights we'd crude yesterday, and we offered caution on that because price was trading above the top of its profile on a daily basis. Now, it's trading into resistance on a weekly time frame. That resistance level there is going to be 57.54. So you're at 57.19. Most certainly, if price were to close above the top of weekly profile, that would suggest higher price. Now, you might say higher price to where? And uh, Tucker, he would be looking at these charts, and Tucker would say, well, that's easy, Steve-O. I would just go to the monthly time frame chart then and look to see where its profile levels are to see that the monthly profile is at 62.19, a bullish structured monthly profile. And then when you go to the quarterly profiles, well, it's a bullish structured quarterly profile with the bottom of the box being 49.15. So 49.15, 52.19 are key levels of support, but those are larger term or longer term timeframes out there. But with regard to light sweet crude, if there's a close today above the top of that daily profile, 56.92, what it looks, and then you'd watch one more price level out there, and that's the top of its uh, weekly box, 57.54. That's where you would then really see a nice move up into the 62 dollars area. Now, Tucker wants to go take a look at natural gas. So if we take a look at natural gas, let's do this here. Pull over the natural gas contract, take a look at its signals. And Tucker very much like, very much like the uh, NQ and the ES Mini out here. What you've got going on right now is bar number nine of a TD setup nine count. Simply suggests caution. Simply suggest if you're in one of those ETFs out there, increasing your stop because we are near what could be a potential short term top. You've got the A to B equal CD pattern. The one to one was 286, but the one to 1.272 is up at 305. And other than a TD setup nine count pattern, that's the only thing that suggests caution. Otherwise, price would be targeting 305, Tucker. That's what I see. When I take a look at the daily time frame chart, for natural gas. We'll be right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. 
From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com. Then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, uh, folks. So a couple instruments uh, being requested that we take a look at. The first one is DocuSign, ticker symbol here is DOCU. This is coming from John in Sarasota. And John asks a question, uh, what do the charts see for this ticker symbol? So one of the first things, John, if we just simply take a look at the daily and the weekly uh, set of profiles out here, we'll see that uh, on the daily price is back inside its box, the top of which is 68.17. And this would suggest that price should continue to pull back into about the 6492 to 6507 level. Now 6507 happens to be the top of its weekly profile. Any close below 6507 would suggest a move back to 6233 out here. So that's what the daily now the daily time frame chart is suggesting caution. We're going to take a look at Stevie's other charts out here. And the weekly time frame chart is saying eh, maybe not so much because price is above the top of its box in the monthly, just not enough data to provide you and I with any information. Now, uh, because I'm, I'm what you don't know is all the things that I'm running in the background as I'm testing out new software applications. And so my chart here is not updating DocuSign uh, on the uh, on the current bar. So we know by taking a look at this bar out here, today's bar, which will not show up, John, on the white background chart right now, that you've got a bearish engulfing candle. Is that a problem? If we take a look at that, uh, yeah, it is a problem because price has been moving higher, doing with less relative energy. So now you've got the bearish engulfing candle. And that suggests that price is going to go ahead and pull back. Now, I don't have any breakout support levels out here. And so, therefore, what we're going to have to do is rely upon these daily profiles. And so we've already given you the daily profile information to be paying attention to. And that's going to be that 50, 6507 to 6492. Again, a close below 6492 says 6233. So if you're looking to enter this, I don't know if you're looking to enter this uh, stock or, or what you're doing out there. The entry point would more likely be in that 62.33 area, but we'd have to see what patterns might be going on uh, as price were to pull back into that area. Uh, Tucker was asking, and I didn't show this here uh, during that segment, but here he was asking about natural gas. We were looking at natural gas before the last break. And what I was uh, sharing with Tucker was that if this is the December contract here for natural gas, this is the contract that is a part of uh, UGAZ, is the only thing inside of UGAZ and UNG at the moment. So this is the contract that we want to be following if those are the vehicles that you are trading. And if we take a look at their key levels of support short-term, Tucker, the price would need to close below. Well, $2.81 is both the breakout level on a 30 and a 60-minute time frame. And it's $2.81, quite frankly, on the 120-minute. So it's that 281 area that you really want to be paying attention to. Remember, if you start to see closes below that, we were looking at that TD setup nine-count pattern on the daily chart. 
for natural gas as well as an A to B equals CD to the upside. This would be the, have then the makings of a potential change in trend or at least decent retracement uh, for natural gas. So these were the three time frames there, Tucker, that I was referring to. Now, let's go take a look at uh, platinum or palladium. What, which one is it? It's palladium, it's ticker symbol PA out there. So if we go take a look at uh, palladium, give us a moment here to switch over. I believe palladium is the December contract. Is that correct, Ruby? Well, that's the one we're going to go ahead and focus on right now. And if we take a look at palladium, I wonder, can I pull that up on my other charting system right now. Give me a moment here just to punch that in. And eh, didn't like that. That's a bummer out there. But if we take a look, so, so I, I, oh, I know what I can do. I know what I can do. Give me a moment here. I just have to do this off screen. My apology. But what this, what this screen that you folks are looking at are showing you the daily and the weekly TAS market profile. So those are helpful to you from a daily perspective. You can see it's trading inside of the box. Man, H I J K L M N O P. There we go. Uh, see how good I am with regard to my alphabet. Man, I've, I've totally got this under control. But palladium, why didn't it pull it up for? Uh, Oh, what a bummer. Huh. Well, uh, sorry, I cannot pull that up on my other charts there, Ruby. So we're just going to have to go with the profiles. Let's expand out on the daily time frame out here. And price is just simply trading with inside the box out here. I'll try to get that set up for you tomorrow. Here, this suggests that price may pull back to support. 17.12, nice uptrend. Doesn't look like that uptrend has changed yet. But if you did see a close below 17.12.60, that would be the first indication of a further retracement. And by further retracement, the only place I can go to right now would be the top of the weekly profile. That's the right-hand panel chart. Let's go ahead and expand this out. And that's at 15.95.90. So everything here looks pretty bullish. Let me take a look at the A to B equals CD patterns out here inside of uh, palladium yeah yeah I uh, watch 17 12 60 out there Ruby that that's what I see when I take a look at uh, palladium i uh, take a look at the December contract I hope that that uh, helps you out and hopefully tomorrow I'll have a palladium for you on my other chart so that we can do a little bit more in depth and perhaps a better review of what uh, Palladium may be doing out there. You're welcome. So no other requests, no other questions out there. Uh, two minutes left in this uh, segment. So the question becomes, you know, what do we want to look at? What do we want to look at? What can I share with you that would really be important? And I don't know what the answer is there. Um, I know that we've got to really be cautious inside the equity markets right now. And we really touched on that. What I didn't do is, is kind of take you through all of the charts out here. So, for example, all the intraday charts. Here's your five-hour time frame chart. Your five-hour time frame chart for the ES Mini is top with a TD setup nine count. Price moving higher, doing with less relative energy. The bar that is in formation right now is going to close at 2 p.m., so about 12 minutes from now. And that's going to generate a bearish engulfing candle. Now, what price has not done inside the ES Mini on a five-hour time frame is bust through support. Now, support here is going to be the bottom of that profile, which is 3069.88. The ES Mini can't trade to 88. But if you did see a close of 3069.75 or lower out there, that would be suggesting a change in trend or at least a topping signal that price should be able to push back to the 3037 level out there. That is the S&P 500 time frame, five hour time frame chart for you. So it has a topping signal pattern. It's actually going to confirm the road momentum indicator top as well as a nine count top. If we take a look at the two hour and 40 minute time frame chart, what we have out here is you've got a confirmed road momentum indicator top. Here, price would need to close below 3070. That's the bottom of its box. If it does, it suggests to move to 3033. So a confirmed topping pattern in the four hour, in the five hour. If we take a look at the two hour time frame chart out here, you also have a confirmed Rhodes momentum indicator top. Now here, price did close below support, which is about where it's trading right now. And this would suggest that move to 3037. But what you do is you pay attention to the four hour and the five hour time frame charts to watch to see if price can close below the bottom of those profiles. As we take a look at the 60 minute time frame chart, what do we have here? We've got a Rhodes momentum indicator top. 
The key level of support now to be watching here for the one hour time frame is that TD setup breakout level, 306875. So what the ES Mini has, it has topping signals on the daily time frame, a confirmed topping signal on the five hour, on the four hour, on the two hour, on the 60 minute, and on the 30 minute time frame. And so John in the den, this is why I am more cautious about the S&P 500 at this very moment in time. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated traded fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN. Welcome back, uh, folks. So uh, John of the Tiger's Den had asked about, uh, you know, have, have I abandoned the theory that the uh, 2019 market is emulating the 2013 market and will move higher out here? So here's the ES Mini for 2013. And uh, the pattern that it was forming on the trading session of October 22nd was a TD set of nine count. Now, we're, we're past that. In this case here, that topping signal never took effect. A TD set of nine count will do one of three things. We'll either see a turn, we'll see a little move sideways, or we'll just simply see a continuation moving on. What we do know, folks, is that when we do see these signals present, it must give us pause. Now, you might say and take a look at the one from October 22nd. Well, what good was that, Steve-O? Well, in 2013, if you took a look at December 31st, New Year's Eve, which identified the short-term top out there, it was with bar number nine of the TD setup nine count. So these patterns work. They're enough to say we need to be cautious out here. 
And that's really what we've got. So we want to just simply watch how the market plays out. We'll put that together by taking a look at the short-term time frames out there, its signals, its levels of support out there, and just simply act accordingly. So if I've learned any one thing, it is to watch for these topping and bottoming patterns, know where support is, support must be broken, and if it doesn't, then the continuation of that existing, in this case here, if support has been broken, bullish trend would remain in effect. And even here where you had the Rhodes Momentum Indicator back on November the 7th, all price did here, John, was come back and test the bottom of its profile of that daily box out there and just simply took off from there. So we'll just simply continue to watch these patterns. These are the patterns that are present inside the inside the ES Mini, the NQ, the uh, YM out there. I mean, here's a perfect example of what we're looking at, where you've got both wave count number seven, letter G, and bar number nine of a TD setup nine count. So I think in the next several days, John, we'll know whether this is just a cautionary sideways move or something more than that. Steve Rhodes with TFNN, folks. Stay tuned. Two more great hours of programming. David White's up next. Tom O'Brien from 3 to 4. I'll be back with you on wonderful Wednesday. Have a terrific Tuesday.